guys, Steve Super. So today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. It's gonna be a Q&A session where I'm gonna go down through all of your guys' comments and I'm gonna pick out some of the comments over the last week and try and just do a quick, I don't know, less than like two or three minute explanation or answer to whatever your questions were. So let's go ahead and get started. So Django commented that uh, it was a tip and it was to analyze the footage that he did at the beginning, copy the distortion value, and then go into Fusion and just paste it. No need to do it manually that way. So let's jump into exactly what he's saying. Okay, so here we are inside of DaVinci. You can see this, this is just some GoPro footage. You can see it has some obvious distortion. So if I just double click on the lens correction and I hit the analyze button, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna automatically fix it. Now that might not be absolutely perfect, but it's a really good start. And so what I can do is I can actually come over here and I can double click on this, hit copy, and then I can turn this off. Now it's gonna ask me, it's gonna say that I've reached the limitation with DaVinci Resolve. If you wanna purchase the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, by all means hit buy now. I'm gonna go ahead and say not yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And then it's gonna go back to the way that it was. Then I'm gonna jump over into the Fusion tab and I'm gonna do this, the same effect, pretty much for free. While I clicked on the Media tab, I'm gonna go ahead and shift space, type in the word lens. It's gonna bring up this lens distort. Click on this and then I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna leave the mode on undistort. I'm gonna come down to the lens distortion model. I'm gonna leave it on 3DE classic LDE model and then where it says distortion, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna command V or control V to paste that number in there. And now you'll notice that it essentially did the exact same thing, only now I do not have the watermark in there. So when I come back over here to the to the edit tab, you'll notice that I have mostly, I mean, to be honest, like I would probably even bump that up just a little bit more, but it gives you a really good starting point. So I could come in here and I could maybe even stretch it out and pull it just a little bit more and it definitely works really well. And then if you still aren't sure about it, you can use my, my method that I used and you can come in here and you can bring in a merge node. And you can see that, you know, it might need a little bit more distortion fix, but for the most part, it works really well. And then all you have to do is uh, delete this part. It's not 100% perfect. Again, you're, you're letting the computer do all the work, but it is definitely a start. So try that out. Okay, so let's go down to the next question I got maybe two hours ago. Uh, can you make a video with letter rotation, please? You are my role model. I am nobody's role model. Let's see if we can do this real quick. So you want letter rotation. Let's go ahead and jump over here. So the absolute easiest way to rotate text will be to just do it inside of the text node itself. Inside the text node, you actually, if you come over to the layout section, there's a twirl down here where it says rotation. And you can actually control the rotations for the text right here inside the text. It doesn't give you the option to really change the pivot point. Uh, but the cool thing is you can actually rotate the text uh, independent of each other, you know, together, but also independent just by coming over to the uh, to the transform size and you can also play around with the shear and the size here you can you can change it up and you can play around with all kinds of different things inside the text to be honest I actually prefer to do it a different way I like to use either the transform node or the DVE node and that's because it gives me the option of moving the pivot point so let me show you how to do that so letter rotation let's go ahead and bring in a text node and load this up. But instead of that, let's just go ahead and just have one letter. And then we'll go ahead and plug this into the media out. I assume that you want to rotate it either in X, Y, or Z space. So let's bring in two different nodes. We'll bring in a transform node, and we're also going to bring in a DVE node. For the transform node, we can we have this angle to where I can now Oh, let me go ahead and so we can actually see it. I can rotate this angle to rotate it any way I want here. I can also flip it, and it's not going to do much looking at it, you know, but you can also rotate it this way. All right, so that's how we could rotate it just around in a circle. But we can also use this DVE node. So here I can rotate it now along the X axis. It, it gives it kind of a 2.5D rotation, if you will. 
I can use the Y to rotate it in the Y axis. And then, of course, I can rotate it in the Z axis, which would be almost the same as if we were using the transform. You can also move the pivot. Now, if I move the pivot, uh, one way to actually just move the pivot. So if I move this X right here, it's going to move the entire thing. But if I hit the tab button now, I can go ahead and I can move the pivot. Let's say I move the pivot over here and then I start to move it in the X axis or the Y axis. Well, now it's going to pivot around this one, this one pivot point. So that's just something to take into consideration. If you actually want it to pivot in the letter, you just need to make sure that that pivot is in the letter. So say this, say it said text instead of just, you know, the T. Well, now when I'm in the DVE node, um, if I move this again, it's going to move the text. But if I hit the tab button again, now I can move the pivot point. Let's say I want to rotate it all around the T. Well, I can do that kind of like a barn door effect. All right. So that's rotating text. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and jump in and see what the next question might be. Munlo Labonic. He said, uh, and this is in relation to my glitch video. He said, there's a node called the prism that does a very similar thing. All right, so the prism, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these and let's take a look at what the prism node actually does. All right, so in that video, I show how you can separate the channels using uh, RGB. So you would, or using a channel Boolean. Essentially what you do is you just separate them and you can move them around. Prism Blur does a similar thing in that you can uh, play around with these parameters over here on the side that will move your color and you'll notice that it's kind of a chromatic blur effect and you can move it up and down um, the colors are somewhat set it's rgb but it's you don't really get the option of uh, changing the rgb now you could play around with it using different settings absolutely and of course this is your your aberration you could uh, strengthen it you can lower it all the way down you can kind of separate it a little bit more you can up the values, but unfortunately, it'll only let you up it to uh, 1.25 is the highest it'll go. But you can move it around, so you definitely can get a interesting effect. Um, and where you could really use this to make kind of a glitch effect is if you were to maybe come in here and then you modify it with like a shake. So here you can kind of get like a glitchy look, and we could play around with that quite a bit to you know to make it look interesting. Prism is an interesting node that we could probably play around with to maybe get some kind of really cool looking glitch effect. In fact, maybe that'd be an easier way to do it in the future. Uh, it is a little different, but it is also pretty cool. So maybe we'll play around with that in the future. All right, okay, this is what he's saying, uh, but how do I make a proper hexagon with equal sides? What I said is just bring in an image of a hexagon and trace it with a polyline. Let's, let's look at what that might look like. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into a fusion comp. I'm just going to delete these for now. And let's bring in a hexagon. And I'll just connect it to my media out. All right, so here's our hexagon. Uh, let's go ahead and add a transform node. And we're actually going to add a background as well. And let's just go ahead and size this down a little bit. All right, let's say that this is the size that I want. It's my perfect hexagon, and I just now want to use this. And But I want to turn it into a poly node. One thing I can do is let's just move this over a little bit. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more. I'm going to bring in another background. Maybe I'll make this one white. I'm going to merge this top one on top of this bottom one. And now I'm going to bring in this poly node. And you can come as close as you need to just to make, you know, maybe just get somewhere in the center here. Is it going to be perfect? It's going to be as perfect as you want to make it. All right, and then you can just disconnect this one here. And now you are left with this, uh, this polygon. And we can just give it a little bit of border width and now you'll see we have a really nice looking polygon that we can still animate very easily just by you know decreasing the length you know changing the position and you can see now we can kind of you know do some pretty cool motion graphic type things with this that I showed in square shapes video so that's one really easy way to do it you really don't need this anymore once you've created your polygon unless you plan on changing it and then if you want to change up this polygon, it's pretty easy. All you have to do 
is you can either come into this background and you can just add a transform node. And now if I need to size it up, size it down, change it, change the aspect, I can even, you know, like I showed in the other, and earlier we can add in a DVD node. And now we can start to, you know, add some different functionalities. Like say I was gonna be a streamer and I just wanted this to continue to spin while that animates. Well, you could do something like that if you wanted to, okay? All right, let's go ahead and delete this. Okay, so it would be interesting to see a meatball or blob effect infusion with a combination of particles. Well, I actually did this in another video of mine right here where I just took the particle and I took the meld tool and I just, you know, I, I kind of did that already. So if you guys are interested, um, that will be linked in the description or up here in the right hand corner, there'll be a card just linking you to this video if you want to see how to actually do that. You can also come over to my website and you can actually download the tool for free if you want. It's just a meld tool. Uh, built it a little while ago just to do a blob type effect. You come over here to cbsuper.com. You can come down here to where the tools are and it's this meld tool. You just click on it and it'll automatically start downloading. I also have a bunch of other free tools here. The Alpha Glow is pretty uh, popular. Um, this is a heat wave distortion. These are just some shock waves. I'll probably delete those soon. The original tool, the paint trace tool that I first built and then uh, just some snow and fog. Um, this is the liquid tool and then backgrounds for motion designers. Uh, William Justice says you can use a subtraction mask as a good way to create the C. Absolutely, there's tons of different ways to actually do the masking. The interesting thing is, is that doing it that way, uh, you're gonna have to deal with now two masks versus the one mask, but absolutely um, play around with it. You guys will be amazed at what you guys can come up with. Finally, you know how to create some simple shapes, yep. All right, a lot of people saying that 16.2 doesn't run as smoothly as 16.1, and they want to know why. To be honest, I really don't know why. Uh, I would assume that you need to update some drivers, but I really don't know the answer to that, unfortunately. Um, you might want to go check out John's Films. He has way more information on computer systems and how to make programs run fast. How can you add macro transitions to be accessed from the Edit tab? Any ideas? Um, yeah, absolutely. I actually made a video on this. Uh, on how to make templates using your macros. So you can come in here, it's just custom title template in DaVinci Resolve 16. Um, I'll go ahead and link this in the video. You guys can go ahead and check that out. It shows you how to make a custom template and use it from the edit tab, it's pretty cool. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, a lot of these questions are the same. They're just worded slightly different. So that's pretty much it for me. I hope you guys got something out of this little uh, quick lightning round for Q&A. If you guys have any questions, please, um, I'm going to start putting out a community tab where I ask you for questions and then you guys can go ahead and throw down your questions in that community tab. And then hopefully by the end of the week, I'll try to do one of these once a week if I have time. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.